Greetings, peace be with you. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the art of mental transmutation, right? This is leading on from the series on hermetic philosophy. So if you haven't checked out video number one in this series, which really goes over the seven laws of the universe, then make sure to do that before diving into this video, okay? Because law number one is based around the principle that the universe is mental, right? We discussed in the previous video about how everything that we experience is taking place within our own nervous system. And as we experience the world, we are actually creating an image of it within our own nervous system, right? So it's not so much that we experience the world so much as we experience the world within us, right? So the world might be a stimulus, but we are the ones who are experiencing it within our own nervous system, right? So where does mental transmutation come into this? So, you know, this morning was, I mean, this day was pretty rough for me because the previous two nights I didn't get much sleep. I didn't hit some numbers in my business that I was striving towards. So I had a certain expectation of what I seek to accomplish. That didn't turn out the way that I wanted, right? That's not the first time that's happened. I have a certain expectation of what I want to achieve. And then as a result, when that expectation is not met, then that really sets the foundation for these lower emotions to come in, these thoughts coming, am I good enough? Am I even capable of this? Will I ever make it, right? Yada, 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 all right? That's the brain, that's the mind coming up with all of these justifications, random stuff that is in the backdrop that doesn't truly serve me in what I'm trying to do, right? So mental transmutation, what does it mean? Well, law number one, as we discussed, is about understanding that the universe is mental, right? That the observation affects the way that it takes place, right? If you have a hypothesis, that will end up affecting the outcome, right? For example, if you have a hypothesis that you're not confident, that you lack motivation, that you lack discipline, then the outcome will be affected by that hypothesis in terms of the behavior that you exhibit, right? So mental transmutation is really about taking control of our own thoughts of our own beliefs of our own hypotheses so that we can actually create hypotheses and really begin to embody beliefs that serve us rather than hinder us right so for example i didn't hit these certain numbers in my business that hit took me on a lower spiral i was getting caught and then i was like okay i need to observe these thoughts i need to look at them objectively because that's really the beautiful thing about business as well it's not personal, right? Business is definitely not personal, but it really is reality because the marketplace doesn't lie. If I'm making an offer to the marketplace and it doesn't hit where I wanted it to hit, then that is not something to said to be said about the marketplace. It's something to be said about the offer, right? So when you think that something is valuable and it turns out not to be the case, then the marketplace really shines the light of your awareness to sharpen your view of reality on that, right? So it's nothing to really feel low about. It's really an opportunity to dig deeper and sharpen my own view of what I believe to be true, okay? So at the end of the day, there's this objective thing that happened. I didn't hit the number in my business. Now, what I let that objective thing end up becoming meaning for me is what mental transmutation is all about, right? Because if I take that, if I make an offer to the marketplace and I get rejected by the marketplace and I think that that means I'm not good enough and that I'll never make it and that everyone who told me I couldn't do it was right, then that actually throws me down the negative spiral, right? Because that is the mental uh, stimulus that has led me to actually believe that I'm not good enough, right? But mental transmutation is really the practice of alchemy, right? Alchemy was the ancient practice, even the hermeticists practiced it. It was like, you know, transforming matter into gold, right? Transforming lead into gold. But mental transmutation is really about transmuting our own thoughts so that we can shift them from this area where they're not serving us, where they are limiting us, to the area of whereby we can actually look at them objectively and begin to transmute them into something that can serve us, right? So for example, made the offer to the marketplace, it didn't hit. One side of it is like, okay, I'm not good enough. The other side of it, okay, I have this data, I have this objective feedback, which I can then use and implement into my hypothesis again and actually increase the, uh, what is it, the accuracy of my hypothesis by implementing this feedback that I have received 
from the marketplace, right? So that's just an example of the art of mental transmutation, right? Taking the data that we're getting in and actually transmuting it in a way that it serves us, right? So anytime that there is a belief, there's a thought, there is a stimulus that leads us to this lower paradigm of thinking that we're not good enough, thinking that we don't have it, then the alchemist is able to actually transmute that thought, is able to transform that limiting thought and look at it objectively and actually plug that into the hypothesis and then improve the likelihood of that hypothesis being more accurate in the next round of assessment, right? So going back to the business example, didn't hit a number, got the market feedback, take the market feedback, okay, what areas might there be a leak? How can I improve this offer for the next time? And then taking that feedback, optimizing the offer again, <laughs> I'm about to sneeze over here, and then using that for... <coughs> and then using that for the next approach towards approaching the marketplace, right? So that is really what it comes down to at the end of the day, right? The first law of the universe, according to the hermetic philosophy, is understanding that the universe is mental, right? Everything takes place within your own nervous system and that the hypothesis that you have ends up affecting the outcome that plays out for you, right? So if you can actually look at that hypothesis objectively and begin to optimize it, right? Rather than getting attached to it, Right. If you look, at, if you begin looking at your beliefs as the hypotheses that you have, rather than treasures to be guarded, then your beliefs can actually begin increasing the validity of their accuracy. Right. They can continue to become more and more accurate, whereby you know what you believe and what is ends up matching together. Right. And that is really the beautiful part about business, because whatever people say, whatever people do, at the end of the day, where they spend their money is what they actually value is the truth right that is what actually truly matters to them so at the end of the day when you're making offers to the marketplace and you're getting validated or not that's really sharpening your own view of reality okay so just a quick video for you over there on how to practice the art of mental transmutation how to transmute these lower negative thoughts that don't serve us these limiting beliefs and actually use them as objective feedback to go back into the hypothesis so that we can optimize the hypothesis in the next round. Okay, so it's very important to get feedback at the end of the day because you can have something in your mind and then you don't test it and you just believe, believe it to be true. You just believe it to be true, but you never tested it. Then you don't have access to the feedback which actually tells you whether it's true or not. Okay, so with that, I conclude this video. I hope that you got value from it. My energy was a bit different in this video because, you know, like I said, I've been sleeping in a... Either way, I hope you got value from it. All right, I hope you got value from the example. Leave a comment below letting me know your number one takeaway from this video. And with all that being said, this has been Mo, and I will see you in the next video.